Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Not on the water today, I'm at the, the side of my house here, but I'm gonna do a little video here breaking down a couple tips and tricks for drop shotting. I know it's one of those things a lot of people cover, a lot of people have their little ways they like to do it. I'm gonna go over rods and reels, line selection, hook selection, and then a couple little tricks in between to kind of help you be more efficient when you're out there on the water trying to catch fish on drop shot. So uh, we'll just dive right into it and uh, if you have any questions, just put it in the comments down below. I'll try to get back with you as quickly as possible. And as usual, my hooks, my rods, my rails, all of the stuff that I'm going over in this video, the links will be in the description for Copper State Tackle. That way you just gotta click if you want those certain worms, hooks, that kind of stuff. Click, boom, it's right there. Add it to your cart and check out. Um, but we'll dive right into it. First off, we're gonna start with the uh, the way that I drop shot. I'd say 99% of the time, 95% of the time, is a nose hooking drop shot. So I always drop shot on a Daiwa Steez. This one's the Finesse Game Special. It's a 7.1 medium light. So it's a little bit softer tip than what uh, than what this next rod is. That way with that nose hook, you get them in there. If they happen to be skin hooked, that rod has a little bit more give. That way it's not uh, ripping that skin if it's just barely skin hooked. But basically, like I said, 7.1 medium light. I run a Daiwa Fuego 3000. That way it's just a little bit bigger reel, a little bit more power, bigger handle. Um, I've been a 2500 guy like my whole life, just switched over to 3000s, and I wish I would have done it way sooner. So, simple steps there. I mean, I mean, simple setup. I do have an expensive rod. I think drop shot is one of those few things that I think you need a really nice, expensive, I mean, not necessarily expensive, but a good quality, sensitive rod so you can pick up those tiny little bites. Um, the reel, like I said, this is the Fuego. It's a, like a $110 reel incredible reel for the price it's the reel i run on all of my spinning rods just for that price point you really can't beat it amazing drag i mean it i have yet to have any problems with these um leader size um all right well i guess we'll start with length i like to start with about a 15 foot leader so basically i'll tie my knot and uh point the rod tip straight up in the air reel it that way it goes up to the tip of the rod and then down where it hits the spool give it about two or three wraps on the spool figure you know seven foot up seven foot back down you're right about 14 15 foot that way it gives you enough line to kind of start with so you're not sitting there retying every time you break off um the line i use i use the sunline fc sniper i have yet to have any problems with it it's an incredibly strong line um weight wise i 95 percent of the time i'm gonna drop shot with eight it's thin enough that you can't uh, like you know the fish aren't going to necessarily see it but it's incredibly strong where i mean if you do happen to get one in a tree or around a rock or something like that it doesn't break now depending on the waters that you're fishing you might need to you know when we go to mojave we drop shot on five pound um lake pleasant right now the water's getting really 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 clear you know you can see 25 30 foot you might want to drop down to that six seven even into the five pound range now when you get into the five pound range that's real key to make sure that you have that drag super loose so real quick let's get in i'll rig this one up for us real quick two different hooks i like the decoy big bite is what i'm going to use 90 percent of the time for my uh, nose hooking and then i do like the decoy shot rig hook so as you can tell, just a little bit smaller hook. I don't know if you can. A little bit smaller, finer wire. Um, when I'm drop shotting swim baits, um, like the haze dong and, and some other real small, you know, a tiny brush hog, those types of baits, I'm going to go for that smaller, more fine wire hook, especially when the water's clear, Mojave, Pleasant, coming up here pretty soon when it's really, really clear. I like to uh, drop down to that smaller hook because this one's a little bit more beefy and... Uh, you know the fish might have a chance to see it i don't know if they do or not it just might be in my head but we'll get this rigged up normal palomar knot make sure she cinches good everybody knows so the hook is kind of hanging however it does um, everybody knows if you don't know you should once you finish tying your palomar take your tag end run it right back through that front part of that hook pop that knot through now that hook is going to stand straight up just like that. That way you just get a little bit more action with your worm. Um, weight wise, you can go anywhere from eighth to half ounce. I prefer a heavier weight most of the time. I run three eighths and halves a ton. Um, 
I do a lot of live scope and so when I see something I cast to I want that bait to get down to it um, before it's gone so um, teardrop cylinder doesn't matter I happen to have teardrops right now as we all know those weights just go in sometimes they cut your line when you tighten them sometimes you don't so there you go you have your rig um, leader length is something I get asked a lot of questions on I like to run anywhere from I'd say a 12 to 24 inch leader um, kind of look and see you know are they on the bottom eating craws you might want to drop down to that six to eight inches or sometimes at Shasta I was running a two to three inch leader because those fish were on the bottom and were not willing to come up for at least me um, so you just mess around with it if you see in the fish suspended three foot up off the bottom shoot throw a three foot leader on four foot leader whatever you can keep manageable um, but I would say normally I'm running anywhere from 12 to 18 inch leader um, baits now when when you go to hook on a nose hook as usual we got the arizona custom baits dusty craws um we actually are doing a huge restock of those i don't know when they're going to be available next but next week they are going to be available in the six inch and the four and a half inch straight tail we've never offered them in the four and a half inch straight tail until now so you guys are going to want to get on those before they get sold out now so now we have the worm we have the flat side of the worm a lot of guys when they nose hook they'll literally just go right through the worm just like that right so now that worm is going to pivot on your hook so every time you cast and that bait is sinking your worm is going to swim like this all the way down to the bottom and then when you cast out and as you're reeling it's going to swim like this all the way back now what that does is just twist the crap out of your line ruins your leaders twist your braid up that's what causes your big explosions in your reels plus that hook is out there i mean you are not weedless by any means so what I like to do, it may be hard to see here, but uh, I go to the flat side of the worm, gauge just about how far that's going to be, and then I just slide it straight up the bottom of that worm. So now that worm is basically just slid right on that hook, and now my hook is just under the top of this worm. So like I can go like that, there's no hook there. Keeps you a lot less or a lot more weedless. So when you're dragging through rocks, your hook doesn't pick up on it trees as long as you're gentle you can work your way through those trees and that worm is straight on that hook so it really eliminates a lot of that twisting as it's sinking and coming in um so that's how i like to set up my uh nose hook drop shot rig um i would say the most important two parts about that is obviously running the line back through the hook that way you have a little bit more action that hook goes up kind of like a snell knot when when you uh set the hook get them more in the roof of the mouth and then obviously that hooking that worm right through the middle is going to be your best case that way you don't have line twist and you stay weedless next setup is going to be like our our cover you know if we're drop shotting trees or grass or something that you know you can't necessarily run a nose hook through I like the Daiwa Stees. This is the Utility Player Spin 7-1 Medium. So basically same rod as the original one or the first one. This one's just a little bit stiffer. And the reason we're going with that is because now we're using a little bit bigger hook. I like a one aught owner cover shot hook. And uh, that hook, I'll show you how we're gonna rig that up. But it's just a little bit more beefy hook. And we're also going to be having that hook in the center of the worm to keep it more weedless for us that way we can fish through the grass we can fish through the the trees and that kind of cover without hanging up so just like the nose hook that hook is still hanging down so take that eye of the hook or that tag end of that hook put it right back through the front this line to get out of my way It's real important to make sure that you don't actually tie a knot with your tag end here. So just like that, boom, that hook is standing straight up. I hope you guys can see that. Same thing, weights anywhere from an eighth to a half ounce. I like to run, you know, that, that three eighths to half ounce is kind of my most common. Just like that, sometimes it does cut your line. Always make sure you do it a little bit longer than normal. So if it does cut an inch or two off, you're not in trouble. Same thing here, we got the Arizona Custom Baits Dusty Craw. We'll be in stock next week. So here, same deal, kind of with the 
uh, the nose hook. We want this to be as straight as possible. So basically you're gonna measure how long that shank of that hook is, push it through and pop it out, right out the belly. Slide that all the way up, push it over your little keeper. That cover shot rig has like a little fluorocarbon monofilament keeper. So basically you have it slid all the way up, your hook is out, you're gonna twist it halfway around and then slide that hook right into it. Now you want that hook to be perfectly straight. That worm is perfectly straight. There's no bend in it other than maybe what I'm pushing on it with my fingers, but that hook is not sticking out at all. It's right under there. That way, as soon as that fish clamps down, it's going to put that hook out. Boom. You got your fish, but you want that thing completely weedless. That way, as you're dragging through the trees, the grass, you're coming through it and you're not hanging up. So those are kind of how I like to rig my two, two drop shots. Like I said, 90 something percent of the time I'm throwing a nose hook. I'd rather deal with a nose hook in the trees and just be real gentle, finesse it through the trees. I feel like your hookups are better. You don't lose as many fish. Nose hooking is just, I think you have more action, all that kind of stuff. Guys like to use the bigger hook to cut the action down. I just always like to nose hook. A um, couple different ways you can fish a drop shot. Obviously you can do, you know, live scoping, seeing fish casting at them. Um, you can shake it when you're there you can drag it i kind of like to do a little mixture of the two i like to drag it a little bit kind of shake it and then basically i want that worm to not be doing too too much so you figure your weights on the bottom it might be hard to replicate but as you give it slack your worm is going to fall to the bottom almost you know weightless like your hook um like a cinco with your hook is going to sink it down so as soon as you go to pick up that slack, that worm's gonna go right back up. So a lot of times I'll try to keep my weight in one spot, let that worm slow sink down. Obviously it's not gonna fall straight down like that, but it's gonna kind of flutter down like this, hit the bottom, you pick that slack up, boom, it comes right back up to the fish's face. That is one way I really like to fish a drop shot. Um, like I said, dragging, it depends on the kind of structure you're fishing. If you're fishing big boulders, there's no way you're gonna drag. So I like to hit those boulders, shake it a little bit, let that worm fall to the bottom, pick it back up, kind of mix it around, reel it in, do it again. All depends on the cover you guys like to fish, but that's kind of how I like to set up drop shots with the specific rods and kind of how I like to do things. If you guys have any questions, like I said, leave it in the comments below. I'll answer them as quick as possible. Check out Copper State Tackle. Everything will be in the description, and uh, hopefully you guys catch a bunch of fish this year.